Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today we're going to work on the Fabric Mate system, which is a wall fabric type of a system. Uh, and I'm using it for acoustical purposes. I'm doing a test sample right now and I am going to show you uh, exactly what I'm doing in one moment. Uh, on the uh, channel, Ken Training, the one that you're watching right now, the goal of this channel is for me to try to provide for you, the audience, all the education and information you need so that if you wanted to tackle this type of a project, you'll have a pretty good understanding about what is involved as far as time, tools, material, things of this nature, and uh, where to get your products and stuff like that. But basically, FabricMate.com is where I'm acquiring everything except, in my case, for the fabric. The fabric itself, you can purchase from FabricMate.com, but I'm purchasing my fabric because it's a specialized fabric from a, a different retailer um, because that was what an architect spec'd out, and that's why I'm doing it. Let me show you the job that we're on right now. Okay, right here is a test sample that I did, um, and you can go to my YouTube channel, Ken Training, and you can look up and find this video where I made this exact thing. And then you see how I made the uh, cutout there. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, I'm going to take it down to the, to the bare, uh, to the bare wall. By, by the way, this is just a makeshift wall where I joined a couple of pallets. You can see where I've joined them in together right here. And I just tried to make two 90 degree walls as best I could uh, using the, uh, the level right there. And it's reasonably level. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this down. We're going to build something that looks similar to this, except this time we're going to put in a cut-in box for electrical and a low voltage box. And I got a couple of different extension rings because I'm using one inch recore. So there's this one here and there's this one here. Also, when I made this video right here, I actually had to cut this framework by hand. On this new video, uh, what I've got is I purchased some seam kits, what they're called seam kits here. And I think this one's called Type B Seam Kit. We'll go through it when we do the video. And that is going to go in here and in here. And, an, and another different thing that we're going to do is we're going to build the frame out this way as well so that if we if we're going into a corner like this case here and you wanted to have fabric on this wall and this wall the and you want to know how to put your frame together that's what this video is going to be about so what I'm going to do now is the first thing the part I'm going to do is I'm going to rip out the fabric and I'm going to tear out this existing frame so we can build our new frame Okay, this was a test frame, and I want to show you what I did. What I did was, is I, uh, on the top section here, I used what they call flush, or the, the full face where the, where the edge seam comes out here, and here I did the low leg where it gets wrapped down and gets wrapped low. So, uh, on this leg here of this test strip, I did it low leg, and I did this one low leg. That leg I did high leg, high leg, and the seam has to be a high leg, it can't do a low leg there. And then here, you have to do a high leg when you go around your receptacles. So um, that's what the frame looks like up close, just to kind of show you. The new one is going to be low leg all the way around for the perimeter, and then high leg on the seams. And also high leg around the receptacle, because you have to use high leg here, you cannot use low leg. Okay. 
Okay, the first thing I have to do is I have to have a rough outline of what it is that I'm trying to build. So let's just say that what I want to do is I want, let's see, the first piece that I did on the original one was uh, 8 inches. So let's say I want to go with a, an 8 inch piece here. We'll go with a mounting height of right about, right about here. And then we're going to go 8 inches down from there which takes us to right here and then that is going to come over like this and we'll, we'll just have this stop right about you know what we'll have it stop maybe right about here then what we'll do is we'll come down I know that I want to put my junction boxes right about here and here is where I want the junction boxes to go so we're going to come down so let's just say here, like that. Could even come a little bit lower. Just trying to get a rough idea of what it is that I'm trying to build. Uh, and then as far as the junction box goes, I'm going to put one junction box. Let me see, I need to avoid this area here. So we'll put the high voltage outlet let's just say right about here and we'll put the low voltage outlet at the same height right about here that should be okay alright and then we're going to want to bring it across the wall, but that shouldn't be an issue. So the main portion that, that is critical here is going to be the seam here, top height here, and the bottom height, which we'll go with, is right here. And then we have to figure out how we want to start this. So why don't we start with this section right here. Okay, so now I want to show you what I'm doing. So because my wall is going to come here and come out first and this wall is going to join into it I need a tall leg which is this piece right here this is a tall leg and you can see the reveal on that see how that's tall as opposed to this one here which is a low leg I'm just using this one here as a spacer and let me show you what I mean by that this particular piece has to first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the this one inch frame here up against the drywall then I'm going to take this tall leg put it here and put it down at the bottom and hold it up against the drywall like this that's going to be my spacing of where this piece here needs to land I'm going to use this as the spacing block now normally I could just start cutting here but what I did was is I purchased this uh, full line one inch B seam kit and they provide you a layout guide and everything and it comes uh, with uh, four pieces now I'm planning on using this one here I don't need this one piece this one these three pieces here are going to be the seam kit of the seam for this seam intersection that needs to go right here if you remember there's going to be a seam there okay so the first thing I want to do is I want to measure this out and it's uh, exactly eight inches so I just want to make so when I do my cuts I want to make sure that with the uh, tall frame product that I have uh, eight inches to make up for that so I'm going to cut that out right now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut here at 45 degrees for the top half of this because I don't want this to walk on me I'm just going to clamp it down and I'm going to hold it in place. Ah, I didn't get a good grip, hold on. Do that one more time, I need to take off a little bit more. The 
this will be the top half of this. It's going to go like that. So now we need to uh, measure this on the inside and just uh, secure what we'll do is we'll just take this, measure the inside of that, like so. Make sure that the uh, marker lines up with that for the cut. We know it's got to go like this. And we want that cut to go right there. That would be perfect. And let me get the uh, clamp on there so it doesn't walk for me. There it is. So when this piece comes across, that there is my uh, top piece right there, like that. So that's good to go. Okay, my first piece is going to go here. I, what I need is I need it spaced off of this wall by one inch. So I'm going to use this as just a spacing block. I'm going to put this in here and just get my left and right down. And I don't need to check my level because I'm using this wall here is my spacing guide so this is exactly where I want to be hold on I'm too low right there is where I want to be I believe right there is fine okay that's good so that's fine, just like that. So when this wall comes in, it's going to come in to this section here. Okay, now that we've got that, we want to bring this across and, um, and have that good. So let me get this next piece right here. Okay, for the next piece, what I've got is I've got a tw this um, part of the seam kit. So I'm going to put this in right here, use my torpedo level to level it out just to get it level and make sure everything is straight once I get a nice bubble in there right there and make sure everything's lined up I'm just gonna punch it in okay I lowered my uh, air pressure to 80 psi it was starting to crack here at 93 psi, so I lowered it to 80. 80's punching good. Okay, now that we got this piece in, I want to extend this out uh, for the next side there. Now, in the seam kit uh, came the other side here, so I'm just going to put this in over here. Let me show you that. And then we'll just make up a piece in between. All right. In the seam kit, it came like this. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna notch this side out a little bit better. I think I can do better. Okay, this is the notch that they provided. This piece is gonna be hidden anyways. So what I'm gonna do, I'll show you exactly what I'm gonna do. I am going to take this piece and I'm gonna cut out a nice big fat notch here to here like that so now I'm really opening this up because I see no reason not to it's all going to be completely hidden and I just like to have all that room for the for the extra fabric to go into so I'm going to go ahead and slap this in right now
Okay, this is how we're going to do the tall leg. I'm going to put this in right there, like so. Butt it up against that as close as possible. Come over to here. Make my line. That's my cut line. And it's a lot easier to make straight cuts than it is to make 45 cuts. It's the, that's why it's just easier to do this. So now we'll go ahead, line that up, make a straight cut, double check. See how well that lines up in there. And that will line up just fine. Now if you wanted to, you could take your knife paddle, put that in there, hold that while you slap that in. Same thing, move it over here. Okay, we're good to there. Now, we need a 45 degree coming up with a uh, low leg. Now, we've got our seam kit here that we got, from our, we got from our seam kit. So I can put that right there, use the level here to make sure that it's perfectly level. Get a nice bubble on that. Right there. That's perfect. Everything else lined up just right. Okay, we're good to go there. Now, you got to get this one across. And then this piece has to be the same length as this piece right here. This piece has to be a, um, a low leg. So what I can do is I can take my low leg material here I got to put a 45 degree on right there. So let's go ahead and cut a 45 degree out of this piece, holding that in tight and firm while I'm cutting that. Now that's the piece that's going to go right like this. Just like that. Make sure that that's good. I can when I do this I'll round that off with the utility knife to make sure that there's no sharp edges right here. So I'm just going to remove that burr. It's right there. Now, here, we want that to be the same length as this piece. So what I'm going to do is line that up there, get my pencil, and mark it exactly on the opposite side. Where that should go. Now we know that it's got to go like that. We want it to be that long. So now when we do our cut, we'll just line that up. All right. This is one of those things where I want to measure twice and cut once. Now, this one here is going to be the outside. Okay, so I want it to cut right to there. So I know I, I know I want my knife mark to line up with the outside edge. So let me just get that in. Hopefully you can see this. Just trying to take my time and get this just right. Okay. All right, hopefully I did a good job. Okay. Now this piece here, if I did it reasonably well, it should be the same distance as that. I'm sure it's pretty close. If I'm off, I can whittle it down. And then here, we're going to need to put in a 45 and, and go to there, right, like that. So, we should be alright though. 
So let's uh, put the level on this and slam this in. All right, lining up these two, this section right here so it's just right. Getting a nice bubble on there so it's perfectly level. Okay, right there. Right, first one I want to slam in is right here. Now, while that's in and I got that tacked, if I can take my time a little bit with this other one and get that bubble exactly where I want it. Good. Now, we need to bring a low leg over here. Let's see what we got in the way of low leg material. We need a 45 degree right here and then a straight cut. So the first thing I'll do is I'll cut that 45. See the material walked on me right there. Let me try that one more time. I gotta try to hold this material in. I try to stay in camera with you guys. Alright, so there's that piece right there. Now I need to cut that and then cut this straight out. So let me go ahead and let's see if I can't do it like this. Alright, straight cut on that and that should fit in. That takes care of the top section. Make sure I'm straight. Get a good grip on my tool. I gotta put this on my knee in order to do this. Let me show you how I'm doing this. So I gotta put this down here. Hopefully you can see that. And make sure I'm straight. And I'm holding this piece in. Now let's see how well I did on the piece. Too long. Got to trim that out. Okay, let me take another eighth of an inch off of that. It's easy to do. It's, e it's a lot easier to do the straight cuts than it is to do the non-straight cuts. Okay, perfect. Now I really don't need to measure this because I'm going to go from here to here. Okay, top section is complete. Now we want to... Okay, now we need a tall leg to come down. We don't have to be perfect here, so we're good there, and we just need to cut, uh, let's just say, well, what did I say? I was going to come down to. I was going to come down to here. So I need a 45 degree cut right there to come across. So I'm going to go ahead and make. And to make sure that I get my cuts right, I just sometimes go like that. So now I know that I need a 45 right there. And let me just line that up. And then hopefully you can see me. And I'm we'll line this up and cut. It doesn't have to be perfect on the sizing right now. Okay. Now this one's going to go right like that. 
that's how we're going to put this piece in. We have a 45 degree. Now this is the one where you do the one inch spacing from the other wall. So I can use this as the spacer. I don't need to use a level here. I just have to come in, make sure I'm off this wall, tight to it, one inch, up, and now I can use my gun and staple that in. And I'm good to go. Everything is fine. Make sure I'm tight to the wall. Alright, hang on. Am I out of staples? Am I out of staples? Alright, let's go to, go to town here. Good, we're up, we're tight. This was just a spacer to be utilized so I knew where to land. Now, we're good to go here, good to go here. It's okay. I could throw one more staple in there just to be solid. Done. That is solid. Now we need to come across. This piece we want to be the same size as this piece here. This has to be a low leg. So, we're going to take a low leg of material, we need to put on a 45 degree angle here, Oops, I cut that one wrong. Okay, I need a 45 degree angle going this way. Let's recut that. I don't like wasting material. Was not good. I didn't want like that. I'm gonna recut that. There we go. Okay. There's our piece right there. I want it to be the same length as this piece up here. Take my pencil. Line this up. Make a mark right there. That is my cut. Now, this piece that gets cut is going to be at a 45 degree angle going that way. Make sure I got it right. So now we come in here, line that up just right. Okay, we have a 45 degree exactly where I want it to be. Okay, we're good. And now we've got a bottom piece here. And so we should be good to go ahead and land this piece. Get a level on it, get my gun, and land this piece. Okay, before I get the level on it, first I'll do is I'll match up those noses. Actually, I'll make sure I'm close with the bubble. Can't even see the bubble. There, right there is close. Then I'll line that up. Then what I'll do is I'll give myself a staple there so I can take my time on the next piece and just get myself a nice level. Right there. And I got a nice bubble. Okay. Done. Okay, now we gotta do this piece. Okay. Now we 
got this, and I can put this one right there, and that will work out fine. And let's go ahead and put that in. And get a nice level there. Just like that. Now we'll get this next piece in, which is going to be a low leg. I got a low leg right here. I need a 45 degree going like that. Then we can measure that out and cut it. So the first thing I'll do, cut this 45 degree here. Just a tad long, still a tad long. I'll take just a smidgen off of that. All right. I'm gonna get myself in here tight. Okay, that looks real good. I don't even need to put the level on it. We're good to go. Okay. Okay, so now, when this piece comes up here, I want to be pretty much just like that. I want to be level. And... Make sure I got a nice bubble in there, just like that. There you go. So if you want to carry it over, you can carry it over like this to the different sections. Um, I guess if this hole was going to be visible, this could be buried all the way to the end. Um, but I'll try it like this. Okay, so here's what we have so far, and we want to put in one more low leg coming across. So we're on that right now. So I've got a low leg of material here. I've got to put that in. Before I do that, I just want to trim this 45 here to make sure it's uh, it, it goes in nicely there we go there and we'll take this put it like that and to make sure everything lines up, what we'll do is we'll put it in like this. Hang on. There we go. And then I'll take the level, put the level underneath, 
give myself a nice level and then the fabric should be able to come over and down and in. Okay, so now that we have a high voltage box and a low voltage box, I want to get the recore material in this bottom section. But before I do that, I gotta figure out and do the framing uh, around for the low voltage and the high voltage. But before I do that, I purchased a couple of items here for single gang boxes. One of them was this kit here, and the other one was what they call an extension box. So, was, so I, I, this is my first time working with these, but I'll tell you right now, the box that I want to use is this one, and I'll tell you why. Because let's say I'm going with the receptacle here. Once I put this in like this and put the receptacle in here, it's nice and firmly attached. When I take the, um, the one inch product uh, tall uh, leg material and I put that in and I go around the perimeter, it's all going to be perfectly attached. If I was to use this and I wanted to go with a receptacle, now how in the world am I going to get this thing uh, situated? And then even if I was to utilize this, it's not like I could take the one inch material here and, I don't know, rest it on, on that because it has to have a spot. There's no, no place for the fabric to go. So I am uh, not, unless I did it just perfectly like this, which is the whole thing is a joke. I mean, oh, and, and not only that, up at the top here, how we, could you possibly do the top and, and get it so that it's firmly attached? I don't, I don't think I can actually do this, uh, this extension ring. I'm not liking it. This is what I'm liking. This is the direction that I want to go into. So I don't, um, I have outlets, but I, I'm, I'm not going to utilize an outlet right now. This is just a mock-up for uh, test purposes. So I'm just gonna put this in with a couple of screws right here so I can build the, uh, the frame. I had some free time and I did not have my camera. So I ended up finishing out the frame, installing the recore material and the fabric. And then here's the final product of what it looks like. Um, fabric is a little dirty right there, and I can see that coming through. Um, and plus, one, I'm going to take this fabric off so you can see what the frame looks like underneath. But um, everything came out really good. Uh, when I did my uh, box for 
where the outlet is going to install. What I did was is I, I um, put the cut-in box there, then I screwed on this uh, extension and then just trimmed out around it like this as you can see and then when the when the outlet sits in there it's going to overlap a little bit here on the top and a little bit here on the bottom which is actually a good thing it'll give actually more strength for the outlet and then when the cover plate goes on here it's going to completely it's, when it's going to completely cover it when the cover plate goes on here so that's going to be perfectly fine um, now when it comes to the low voltage what I plan on doing is having uh, two uh, Ethernet LAN ports to go through the wall plate and uh, this should be okay this should look fine the screws that come with it are not long enough I need to get longer screws these are the screws that came with the um, the extension ring for that so when it comes to the outlet the um, the outlet screws obviously aren't going to work so I have to remove those and then put the screws that came with it. I have to get more of these screws also for the low voltage outlet. The job came out pretty good except for this corner here. I got a little bit of bunching up when I ripped that apart. Let's see if I can find out what in the world I did wrong there because it just came out a little bunched up. The average user probably won't even catch it, because, but because I did the job, I know I bunched up right there. Now, if your corners are going to be hidden, not a big deal, but this is what the corners kind of look like as I trimmed it out. And here's the bottom corner here. So they would look rough if they were visible. Uh, uh, so with, when it comes to this type of a frame, only to what I really want to use it as long as the frame is kind of hidden um, for an exposed frame it's uh, it's a little rough up at the top this is what it looks like when you have the in the corner but again if there's a wall up here and this is all hidden then you wouldn't see that but if this was going to be an exposed fastener uh, exposed area uh, that would not be attractive so different things to think about when you're building your your walls out what I'll do now is I'll rip the fabric out. We'll see what the frame looks like. All right, now keep in mind that these were just test pieces that I was just trying to fill in. So you can see how I have a, just a bunch of small pieces of uh, the recoil material that I just kind of put in there. Actually, everything was pretty unnoticeable, especially all this splicing in. I don't think you could see that with the fabric on there. The only issues that I had was I did have a dark spot here, and I'm not sure if the fabric was dirty or what. Um, now one thing that I want to point out I do have a little bit of ivory in here my fabric is is white most of my frame is white but on the kits that I purchased which is these kits right here I purchased a whole bunch of these kits somewhere around here um, anyways I've got these these kits which is the uh, the B kit uh, for for the uh, for the one inch recore, so I purchased a bunch of these kits, and I installed two of the kits right here. One of them is right here, and the other one is right there on that that leg right there, going that way. So let's see here. Well, maybe I just used one kit actually on this uh, uh, on this. Uh, Mock up. I just did one kit. That was just an extra leg because there's four pieces that come in each of the kit. They're like six dollars a kit. And um, anyways, I did install one, but they're only 
they're only this long so you have to then they have a flush cut and then you have to continue on and then do the rest of your cuts so it, it was a little bit of a time saver now um, this is what the detail looks like on this edge right here so I just had to just make sure that I trimmed it out a little bit and make sure that everything was uh, okay there and that uh, worked out just fine the one that gave me the hard time was this one back here now the uh, I don't know what to tell you I thought that I that I'll have to actually wait a second this uh, recore is not even uh, stapled in let's go ahead and rip out this recore let's see how much of a if I got a V gap in there or what I'll just have that in there you can just pull that out with the utility knife because it's not it's not in there solid and you can't see the V on that let me see if there's a V let me pull that out all right so we're gonna use this tool grab it from underneath and then pull that out. Let's see what that looks like. All right, they don't. I this is the this is how much they cut out. Okay, I can cut that V out much much better with uh, taking out a whole bunch of material there, and that would have probably made a little bit easier for my fabric because this was the one that was really giving me a hard time. As a matter of fact. I could have even have v-notched out this one and this one I could I could actually v-notch out all three because once this wall comes in this is all buried you're not gonna see any of that and like I said it uh, this was the one that was bunching up on me and giving me the hard time so it might have been beneficial to do that and I'll try that on the next job that I do on that transition where the seams are that go right there um, here's the rest of the uh, work for everything else you can see how I did the, uh, the the cutting boxes I I did probably do this a little tight because what I did was is I I just screwed this in and then just go, went around it with the trim so I probably could have been a, a well you know it, it, it's still going to work out fine. Maybe this is the appropriate way to do it. Put this in and just trim around it. And um, pretty much you can kind of do the same thing here. But I did not, as you can tell, here it's a little bit fatter. I could have been tighter, but I left it. Uh, uh, what I did was, is I just brought the trim right out to the orange low voltage box and just butted up against it and then did it like that. And it worked out fine. Um, it's going to work out fine. But this is what the the rest of the uh, frame looks like here's what these pieces look like now on this piece here I did kinda go back just a little bit and on this one I went back all the way to the edge so that's how much I went back all the way there let me show you underneath what that looks like so this is a low leg I did here this here is the flush leg here, and then another low leg here. And those how the two low legs intersect on the top. I guess uh, it's not quite the same on the bottom because here, on this leg, I stopped here. On the bottom leg, I actually did that differently. You'll see how I brought one leg, this leg here, all the way to the end. So I didn't do that on the top. But theoretically, there would be a wall here like this and this would all be buried same thing on the top when you're looking at it on the top it would be like this so all of that would be buried you wouldn't see any of that so anyways that's it for what the uh, frame uh, looks like and then using a low voltage box and a high voltage uh, cut-in box Okay, that's going to conclude this video. I hope you like this video. Smash that like button down. Please leave comments below if you uh, have any input about your projects that you're working on and how much training it took for you to go through to, to get to the point where you could uh, lead a job on your own. 
And, uh, and that's it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, Ken Training, and I'll see you later.